So today is the fifth day of spring. Vernal equinox was on Wednesday afternoon. And vernal equinox is Persian New Year. It's no rules. And amongst you, there are a few members of Iranian American community, so I want to take this opportunity to wish them happy no rules. And happy no rules to all of you. Randy has asked me to cover this subject in eight minutes, and I'm going to do my darnest to finish before 10 minutes. So, how do we get there? Here we are. So, this is the subject matter tonight. Portland, with its six gardens, is already a city of garden. Leech Botanical Garden, Crystal Springs Rhododendron Garden, and the Rose Gardens in Washington and Peninsula Parks are styled after sort of European and English gardens. The two culturally specific Japanese and Chinese gardens were initiated and advocated for by Portlanders who envisioned them as centers for furthering understanding of their ancient cultural heritage, as well as becoming public attractors for their beauty. I believe Portland can once again take the lead in showcasing the rich and diverse cultural heritage of a vast region of Central Asia and Middle East by establishing one of its most ancient form of art, a Persian-style garden. The Persian Empire at its height between 600 and 500 BC during the reign of the Achaemenian dynasty extended from Greece in the west to India in the east and Ethiopia to areas north of Caspian Sea. Trades and travels among the nations and tribes within the empire helped to create a rich tapestry of cultures, styles, and languages. Persia, the current Iran, and the seat of the Achaemenids is geographically a high plateau, walled by two very high mountain ranges in the north and west, dividing the country into a largely arid and dry central and eastern regions, standing in contrast to the verdant and horticulturally diverse north and west. Its similarity to Oregon's landscape cannot be ignored, where the north and the west sides of the mountains are forested green with abundance of wildflowers in the hills and agriculture in the valley, while the landscape of the dry side is mostly barren and stark, with numerous geologically significant features and vast deserts. The earliest recorded gardens for which a physical evidence is found is in the plains of central Iran, built over 2,500 years ago by the Achaemenid king Cyrus in his palaces of Pasargad and Persepolis. His reign ushered in a new civilization with unheard of affluence and luxury, and gardens began to assume most important um, center of culture of the life of the ru rulers of the region in the entire empire, and were built for pleasure and to signify power. Evidence of many ancient royal gardens are found in old Persian carpets and miniatures in old manuscripts. The spatial organization of a Persian garden is a quadripartite, a charbagh char in Persian, with four major design elements water, plants, walks, and structures. 
Oh, I didn't move that, did I? Didn't move. There it is. European, especially English gardens, are meant to be part of their surroundings, integrating the countryside into the garden. In contrast, a Persian garden stands in opposition to its surrounding landscape. The garden is always walled to keep out the dust and the intruders if it's located in the countryside, or to shield it from the clamor and the noise of the crowded streets if in the city, where within the walls all is calm and garden becomes a still point in a changing world. The vegetation and geometrically ordered spaces in Persian style gardens are ancient archetype, promising a divine order where certain objects in nature are universally sacred. In heaven is the sun, the source of light. On earth, trees are the symbols of eternal life and knowledge. Holiest of all is the water, the primal element from which all life began. The water flows from a center pool into two intersecting streams, or rivers of life, extending to the four corners of the world, dividing the world into squares and establishing the formal axes of the garden. The squares between the water rails are slightly sunken for ease of irrigation through periodic flooding. The squares closer to the primary access are planted with towering trees ornamentals, and carpets of fragrant and colorful flowers. The larger beds in the outer squares are often used as orchards for grapes, pomegranates, and other fruit trees. The architectural rigidity of the vertical walls and horizontal rails are contrasted with tree shapes and patterns creating shade and protection from sun's intense heat. Another very important element of a Persian garden is a summer pavilion or two, almost always located at the termini of the intersecting water rails. The building's interior are often designed as work of art, emulating the garden's exuberant color and textures and from which the beauty of the garden can be viewed and enjoyed. Oh, I think I, there is a, there it is. The four tenets of the Persian garden have also been used to plan cities. The city of Esfahan was expanded from a small town into a thriving, beautiful city in the early 16th century and became the capital of the Safavi dynasty. The Karun River, intersecting with other canals, divided the city into vast quarters, within which many other squares and gardens formed a spatial structure around which villas, mosques, and commercial buildings like bazaars were located. And yet, at much smaller scale, the residential gardens are designed to be sanctuaries, protecting its occupants from the hustle and bustle found outside its walls. One of the oldest and significantly intact gardens in Iran is the 16th century Bagh of Fin, or Garden of Fin. Its quadri quadripartite layout with series of squares of different sizes occupies six and a half acres of land in the ancient city of Kashan, south of Tehran.
The rectangular pool at the top of the garden defines the access behind the pavilion. The broad central alley is shaded by 400-year-old cypresses alongside the soft bubblers in the main rail. Small pools of water interrupts the flow of the main and secondary rails, both within and outside of the pavilions of the garden. The interior of the pavilion, pavilions are intricately colorful and opulent in contrast to their simple and monotone exteriors. As I mentioned in the beginning, Persian-style gardens are found in all countries trading with or within the old empire and beyond. Taj Mahal in India and the gardens of Alhambra in Spain are two very well-known examples of this style of garden. And to this day, the Persian-style garden continues to inspire some of the most recent contemporary gardens in Europe and North America. So to conclude, as with the Japanese and Chinese garden, the establishment of a Persian garden in Portland, which offers a much, would offer a much needed opportunity to enhance America's knowledge of the history, art, and cultural heritage of a mostly misunderstood region of the world. I hope you agree with me that Portland is the right place for this because it has done it before and it knows how to do it. Thank you.